is enough said. Happy Hump Day, Heat Nation! Your boy Ernest here, boom, 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 back with another Miami Heat Talk video. Feeling great, you guys. I woke up today, so you know what I say. Every day we wake up, we're blessed. It's already a great day. We winning. So let's go ahead and spread that positivity by smashing that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. I know y'all know the drill, but it's like I've mentioned before, about 58% of people that watch my channels are not subscribed. And if we get to 5,000 subscribers by Labor Day, I'm going to do a $50 giveaway. So help your boy out and it can help you in return. Now let's get ready to rock and roll on another Miami Heat Talk adventure because I got a fun one for you today, you guys. Today we're going to be talking about the man whose jersey I got on right now. Um, our, not Kyle Lowry, not even Kalel Ware. We're going to be talking about the dragon, Goran Dragic. Because I got an interesting topic for you today, you guys. But before we get there, I just want to give you know my salute, my thank you, congratulations to Goran Dragic. He recently had his retirement game. I posted a video about it last week where Chris Bosh was going to be playing in the game where he got medically cleared. Uh, it was funny because after the game, Chris Bosh talked about how he had offers to go to the Euro League, uh, but he didn't want to take it because he didn't want to, you know, move his family to, you know, to, to a different country. His kids were babies at the time. And as a father of two, I got to respect that. So my hat's off to Chris Bosh. Uh, it was a retirement game for both technically because Chris Bosh plays his final game um, of, you know, organized basketball, I guess you could say in that level. And then Goran Dragic is officially retired. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about Goran Dragic, you guys, because I'm watching the game. I'm watching the highlights. I'm seeing what Gogi's doing, and I'm like, damn, man. And, uh, you know, an idea came to my head. And I want to talk to you guys about it because the question of this video is should Goran Dragic's jersey hang up in the rafters for the Miami Heat? Should we retire? Number seven. Now, I know people are already freaking out saying, well, Ernest, no, uh, Kyle Lowry wore number seven, and now Kalel Ware wears the number. I understand that. Let's take a pause and breathe for a moment. First and foremost, they got Dragic's permission to give Lowry number seven. Now, what the hell happened with Kalel Ware? I don't know. I'll be honest with you there, guys. Uh, Kalel Ware didn't even wear number seven in college. So that could be changed if you're going to retire number seven. I do think it sucked that the Heat gave Kalel Ware number seven because it kind of takes away the mystique of the number seven for Goran Dragic. However, things can change. I, I don't really think it's an issue. I think if the Heat goes to Kalel Ware and say, hey, we want to retire Dragic's number seven, we're going to need to change your number. What do you want? That's a simple conversation. So it can happen, you guys. So for people saying, oh, Kalel Ware wears number seven, that can't happen. False. It can so now that we've crushed that, let's move on to the real topic. Does Goran Dragic deserve to have number seven retired in the rafters? Because before Goran Dragic was with the Miami Heat, he was with the Phoenix Suns. In the 2013-2014 season, he broke out and became an all-NBA third team player, averaging 20 points a game, six assists, 40% uh, from the three-point line. He was a bucket getter. Goran Dragic, even though small, six foot two, six foot three, can score at will. This is a guy that offensively, with the ball in his hand, is a maestro. But he really broke out. He really made his name. And I think he really had his best seasons here with the Miami Heat. Now, Goran Dragic was traded to the Miami Heat in the middle of the 2015 season. Now, as we remember, that was the year that LeBron left. And Pat Riley was not willing to give up. He traded for Goran Dragic and assembled an incredible starting lineup. Hassan Whiteside, Chris Bosh, Luau Dang, Dwayne Wade, Goran Dragic. In my opinion, 2015-2016, that was the team. That was the team that could have gone either to the Eastern Conference Finals to play LeBron and the Cavs, or they could have shocked the world and made it to the NBA Finals against the Golden State Warriors in 2016. Would the Heat have won against the Warriors? Who's to say? But that starting lineup was incredible. But what happened, as we all know, Chris Bosh went down to blood clots in both the 2015 season and the 2016 season. And it's funny because right when the Heat traded for Dragic, a week later, 
Bosch got diagnosed with uh, blood clots. It's like the basketball gods were like, no, you went to four straight NBA finals. This shit ain't happening. Bam. So, I, I mean, I joke, you guys, but it's it's literally what happened. Twenty six um, In 2015-2016, Goran Dragic was kind of finding his way with the Miami Heat. He was also taking a back step to Dwayne Wade. He was allowing Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh to be those guys. Now, when Bosh went down with the blood clots, Dragic stepped up. He started scoring more. He started taking more responsibility with the Miami Heat roster. But it wasn't until the 2017 season when Dwayne Wade left to the Chicago Bulls, Bulls where Goran Dragic ascended himself in Miami Heat culture. Because in the 2016 playoffs, you guys, he showed that he fitted Miami Heat culture. When he broke his tooth in the middle of a play, picked up the tooth and presented it to the referee because he didn't get a foul call. That's Heat culture. Goran Dragic busted his tooth, continue to play. That's Heat culture. Guys like Goran Dragic on that team. Tyler Johnson, James Johnson, Justice Winslow, Josh Richardson, Hassan Whiteside, even though we know what he became, but at that year, Whiteside was great with these guys. You would see starting lineups out there with Goran Dragic, Dion Waiters, Rodney McRuger, Luke Babbitt, and Hassan Whiteside. And this team won 13 straight games. All because of Goran Dragic and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Eric Spolstra with a mix of those players that just wanted it all. And Goran Dragic stepped up his third year with Miami. Averaged 20 points a game, 6 assists, 40% from the 3-2-point line. His numbers were very similar from his 2014 season when he made all NBA third team. Didn't make it that year. I mean, players were just different. They were playing a lot better in 2017. You know, makes a lot of sense. 2018. Goran Dragic becomes an all-star with the Miami Heat. Um, after that, the 2019 season, he did suffer a lot of injuries, but then Jimmy Butler comes to this team in 2019. And then Goran Dragic really finds his way with this team. Because that's who Goran Dragic is, you guys. He was the Miami Heat guy post-Dwayne Wade era. He was our star. Him and Hassan Whiteside were the guys. It was sad at times, we were mediocre at times, but they were our guys. And I can't tell you how proud I was when Goran Dragic was accepted to the 2018 All-Star Game. It might have been because of injury, but he still made it and represented the Miami Heat. And that's big for him, you guys. In 2020, he helps the Miami Heat make it to the NBA Finals. He was the leading scorer for the Miami Heat in the 2020 bubble. Unfortunately, he gets injured game one. Bam Adebayo gets injured game one. Jimmy Butler gets injured game one of the NBA Finals against the Lakers. But in my opinion, that 2020 team for the Miami Heat were the best team in the bubble. Because with Jimmy, Bam, and the Dragon all injured, they still took LeBron and the Lakers to six games. What does that tell you? That team was ready, and it sucks they never got it, but it is what it is. 2021. Goran Dragic's last season with the Heat, you saw a big decline. He got injured, averaged about 13 points a game, played only 50 games. You saw, the, you saw, him, to, you saw him declining. So you made a trade in the offseason in 2021. You traded Goran Dragic for Kyle Lowry. You added Precious Achua, and then Kyle Lowry gets number seven. Now, I will say this. Goran Dragic played seven years with the Miami Heat. He led, to the Miami, he led the Miami Heat in multiple play, to multiple playoffs. He led us to one NBA Finals. I think that is proponent enough to say that Goran Dragic deserves to have his number retired in Kaseya Center or whatever the hell we're going to call it at that time. And the reason why, you guys, look at, the, look at some of the players we have in the, in, in the rafters. I'm not going to say Udonis Haslam because Udonis Haslam was our captain, our leader, and he was a strong proponent on why we won three NBA championships. But Tim Hardaway, Tim Hardaway's number is also retired in the rafters. And when you look at Tim Hardaway and Goran Dragic's career here with the Miami Heat, very similar. But one difference, Dragic led the Miami Heat to an NBA Finals. Tim Hardaway did not. With Tim Hardaway's run with the Miami Heat, I believe it was six years, they made one Eastern Conference Finals. And you put that guy's number on the rafters. I think Goran Dragic, seven years with the Heat, one NBA All-Star game, 
an NBA Finals trip, multiple playoffs, I think he deserves to have his number retired. Because if it's not with the Miami Heat, I don't see another team retiring his jersey. Maybe Phoenix, but really? I think he deserves to have his number retired with the Heat because that's where he had his best years and that's where he had his most success. But I want to hear from you, Heat Nation. What do you think? Do you think Goran Dragic deserves to have his number retired? Or do you think because the Miami Heat gave Kalel Ware number seven, that's not going to happen? Let me know in the comments your thoughts, you guys. And also, tell me your favorite Goran Dragic Miami Heat story. I'm curious, you guys. Let me know in the comments your thoughts. Don't forget to like the video. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel as we push for 5,000 subscribers. And remember, you guys, if, we get, if you get me to 5,000 subscribers by Labor Day, I'll be doing a $50 giveaway. Thank you guys so much for the continued support. And until next time, your boy Ernest out. And that's enough said. Yeah, buddy. Let's go.